Last year, I um, I was asking the Lord. I ask the Lord every year for what He wants to say every year, and uh, and I had didn't know all the stuff that was going on globally um, in the churches around the world. Um, I didn't know anything um, that was happening, and God gave me a word in September, around September this year for my life, but I do believe it's a principle in the body. And he gave me a word that this year was a year of humility. A year of humility. Now, when God gave me that word and I shared it to our church, it's not the most exciting word to share. It's not like it's the year of double portion or the year of favour or the year, like the year of humility. Well, thank you, Pastor. I really appreciate that. And um, I have some uh, people on my staff who I get to write papers for me when I get themes and they do their um, really good academics. And uh, in fact, they write papers for um, Oxford University as well. And so I get them to write a paper and I said, I need you to write me a paper on humility. Because, you know, when you, you're teaching something, you want to do due diligence on it. And, uh, and as, it, as I begin to read this paper, I'm like, why wouldn't you sign up to humility? All the, all the blessings and benefits that come through humility are off the chart. <laughs> and I, I begin to look at the life of Moses. You know, Moses in Acts chapter 7, I think it is, says, in Pharaoh's house, Moses was mighty in words and powerful in deeds. So when we get the picture of Moses who can't speak or is a stutterer who doesn't know what to say, in Pharaoh's house, he was not like that. He was mighty in words and powerful in deeds. So something happened to Moses along the way that affected how he lived. I believe it was the rejection of his people. Because when God created Moses, He created him as a deliverer. He, he, he was put in the king's palace to be a deliverer. And there was a moment where his delivering gift rose up when some of his people were getting persecuted and he killed the Egyptian at that delivering gift. It was, but the problem is he was doing it in the flesh, not in the spirit. And the next day, some of his countrymen, the Israelites, were fighting and they said, and they said, well, who are you to say you're the one that killed that guy yesterday? And the Bible says that Moses ran to the wilderness, but even in the wilderness, he was a deliverer. He delivered his future wife from people attacking them. Then there's a moment that Moses has an encounter with God and, he, and God says, I want you to go set my people free so that they can worship me. And, God said, and Moses says, but I can't speak. But Acts 7 says he was mighty in words and powerful in deeds. Yeah. Who would ever argue with a burning bush, number one? If a burning bush is talking to me, I'll say, whatever you want me to do, I will do. A bush that is not getting on fire, but it's on fire. And then God says, put your hand in your coat. And he pulls it out and it's leprous. He says, put it back in and he puts it back in and it's fine. Surely you'd believe by now. Then God says, see your staff? He says, yes. Throw it on the ground. Throws it on the ground, it becomes a snake. And then he says, pick it up. I actually think it took a lot of faith to pick up a snake. Picks up a snake. But still he says, I can't speak. So God, I love God because he gives us grace in our weaknesses. He gives us a season of grace so that we can work on our weaknesses. So he says, okay, get your brother Aaron and he can come and be your spokesman. And so they go uh, to the uh, Pharaoh and they say, let my people go. Let my Talk about courage, amazing courage. Let my people go. Then eventually they get set free. And they see so many miracles. And then he has an encounter in Exodus 33 with God, and he says this, he says, And Moses said to God, If you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you looked favourably on me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all 
the other people on the earth. See, I think Moses has learnt the lesson. He's a deliverer in the flesh. Didn't work. He runs away. He's in the wilderness and he has weaknesses, but God uses him. And so in this occasion, he's saying, I've learnt my lesson. Unless your presence goes with me, I'm not leaving this place. In other words, I am going to be totally dependent upon you and your presence. See, what humility to me is, it's total dependence upon God in every area of my life and walking a life of repentance. Total dependence is not, well, I'm humble and I pretend to be humble. Yes, la, can la. And then you, in your mind, you're like, Aah! or you, you get pushed aside instead of standing strong in your faith. So humility is not weakness. Humility is dependence. When David's facing Goliath, he's not arrogant, he's dependent. He's not, he's not backing off, oh, no, no, like how the world pants humility. He's actually walking forward. And he says, you come to me with a sword and the spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. In other words, my dependence isn't on my sword or my spear or even some armour that my king is trying to put on me. I come with my total dependence. I'm exposed. You're big. I'm smaller, you've got big uh, weapons, I've got a stone. But what I do have is I have the name of the Lord of hosts. Hmm. He's humble. In fact, Numbers says that Moses, by the way, was the most humblest man that walked the earth. (laughs) In Philippians 2, one of my favourite scriptures in the Bible, it says this, Philippians chapter 2. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fill my joy by being like-minded. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do you be like-minded? Humility. (laughs) It says this, having the same love, according of being of one accord of one mind. Oh, there's another scripture that talks about they were in one accord. Called Acts chapter 2. So revival happens obviously where there's one accord, one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in the lowliness of mind, let each of each other esteem others better than themselves. Now, the Bible says to love others as you love yourself. So it's not saying, well, I'm nobody, you're better. No, it's not like that because you need to love you like you can love people because hurt people hurt people and people who are loved by God and have an understanding of love, love people. So where it says it's esteem them, it's not saying, well, you know, I'm nothing and you're great. No, actually, I'm actually secure to esteem you so that you can be better. It says this, next verse. Let each of you look not only, so you've got to look after your own needs, but not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. The humbled and exalted Christ, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the very form of God, did not consider it, Robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant. The bond servant was the lowest of lows. So you think about this this is the God of the universe, this is the King of all kings, and he takes a form of a bond servant, coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became. Obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of of those on earth and those on, uh, on heaven and on those on earth and those under the earth. And that every tongue 
shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. This scripture blows my mind because it's saying that we need to take on that, that, that position, that spot posture. All through the Bible, humility is the common tenant, although until the time of Christ, humility was not considered virtuous. It was not a desirable thing. It was almost never voluntarily. Nobody would ever humble themselves since doing this, it would bring oneself slow. People saw honour and position, not in an arrogant way. A person's honour and position was thought to be a result of their merit and their worth that they were entitled to. The scope of biblical content regarding humility is extremely difficult to overstate. From the writers of Proverbs and the prophets of the Old Testament to the teaching of Jesus and the New Testament authors, humility is a foundational biblical principle which direct ties to many as the most important aspects of the Christian life. On numerous occasions, Proverbs teaches that God opposes those who are proud. He never opposes a sinner, he opposes, opposes the proud. But honours those who are humble. The prophets inform us that humility is one of the attributes God desires most in those who serve Him. In the Sermon on the Mount and the parable of the wedding feast, Jesus makes it clear in disregarding a worldly reward and a humble attitude receives an eternal one instead. Furthermore, the New Testament authors distinctly teach us that the humility results in the exaltation of God and even brings about unity in the church. However, perhaps the Bible's most powerful lesson on humility is not merely a teaching at all. Rather, it is the ultimate demonstration of the incarnation, life and death of Christ. <laughs> so when I begin to do the due diligence, when I begin to do due diligence on humility, I'm like, why wouldn't I be humble? Bible says God opposes the proud. And sometimes we think the proud is like, you know, people strut around. No, a proud person is somebody who doesn't submit to God. <laughs> because what we're doing is we're saying, we, we know more than you. <laughs> a proud person is somebody who doesn't pray. If you're not praying in your life, what you're saying is, God, I don't need you, so I don't need to humble myself and ask you. Why wouldn't everyone sign up to 24-7? Everyone should be a part of this journey. See, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, verse 6, Humble yourself therefore under God's almighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. You see, God lifts us in due time. One of the things I love about Pastor Mark is his hunger for the presence of God, which has kept him humble. Every time... I'm with him. And, you know, at times see, we're, we're brothers and there, there's times we've had a little clashes at times. You know, the sucked in thing wasn't a clash. It was just fun, right? Um, but we've had little clashes at times. And guess what happens? When we get together, we humble ourselves. That's why we are like this. That's why. Pastor Mark could say, well, I've got a big church and I could say, oh, I've got a big church and I'm going to do my thing and, and yeah, I'll do my thing. No, no, no. We're brothers because we understand who we serve and who we come under. And, and so I, I find it an honour being on the, the oversight of this church to serve Pastor Mark. My position on the, on the oversight isn't to oversight, it's actually to serve. And you know what? When I talk to him, I say, Pastor Mark, what, it, this thing, well, I, what about you looked at that? And he'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let. And he'll humble himself. That's how the kingdom works. Because the Bible says, God lifts up those in due time. Not just like you, Many of you don't know our story, uh, but I, I have this group of guys that I brought together who are young champion potential people. And Pastor Mike, Mark, Mike, Pastor Mark came in to that group. And he came in sort of by default because it, Pastor Neil Smith, who was running Lakes, which then became Kingdom City, um, Mark was on staff with him. And he, and he came on this trip to him in the Gold Coast. And, and Mark came into the room and, and the Spirit of God was there and God began to prophesy over him. We began to prophesy and then KL started, basically. 
And all the other guys in the group were ahead in their church sizes and all that. Mark was the new guy. And I remember Mark would come into the, the place and we've talked about this and he'd feel a bit overwhelmed and, you know, what am I doing here, what I'm doing? And I, I told him one day, I said, you're the stealth bomber. And he goes, what's that? I said, a stealth bomber flies under the radar, but when it comes out, people will be amazed. Now in all that group, <laughs> he's, he's got a bigger church than all of them. Why? Because... God, when you humble yourself, God exalts you in due time. So if there's something you can learn from Scripture in your pastor, is humble yourself. The second thing that the Bible says humility does is the Bible says God gives grace. James 4, 6 says, but He gives us more grace. That is why the Scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the humble. James is, is quoting Proverbs 3.34. It says, He mocks the proud mockers, but shows favour to the humble and the press. So God gives you grace. He gives you unmerited favour. 28 countries and growing hasn't happened because, yeah, look at us, we're Kingdom City. No, it's because we've humbled ourselves and we said, God, we need you. And God says, okay, I'm going to give you unmerited favour. I'm going to give you blessing that you won't even, it'll blow your mind. You'll be sitting here and amazed. But here's the deal. It's not just talking about the church corporate. It's talking about you as part of the church. Your business will be blessed. Your family will be blessed. Your, your community will be blessed. Why? Because you can carry grace when you're humble and wherever you go you release unmerited favour because humility is the result of God giving grace but it even gets better Matthew 5 5 says blessed are the meek same word for humble in the Greek for they will inherit the earth so watch this humility releases God's blessing to grant inheritance of land and territory. God will bless you and grant you inheritance, land and territory. <laughs> I, I stand here today and I'm amazed at how God has used a little insecure pastor's kid to do what God has done through us. I, I'm amazed. I, I just go, how, how is this crazy? This is crazy. Pastor Mark's the same. He's like, I was a lawyer. I wasn't even looking for this. And, and I just wanted God. You know, whenever, whenever I knew him, he just wanted God. He'd be playing keyboard for me at a camp and he wanted God. He just wanted God. He wanted God. He, he just wanted His presence. I just want your presence. I didn't care about all the other stuff. I just want your presence. And God says, awesome. Because you've humbled yourself, I'll bless you. I'll bless the people that are in your world. I'll bless those who carry this, this banner, this prophetic banner of Kingdom City, bringing the Kingdom to the city, not bringing the Kingdom to a person that says it's about my Kingdom. No, it's about bringing His Kingdom to a city to change Indonesia, to change Malaysia, to change Singapore, to change Australia, to change India, the world, Botswana, Zambia and beyond. So I bless you and grant you with an inheritance, with land and territory. Why wouldn't you want to live humble? But it gets better. Second Chronicles 7, 14. This scripture is written after the rebuilding, well, the building of the vision that David had for God's um, ta tabernacle. And, and, um, and Solomon asked God, you know, all these things. And, and, and this is God's response. If my people who are called by my name any people called by His name? Any Christians in this room? You're called by the name of God. Half of you are going to respond to the Salvation article, obviously. <laughs> You're called by my name. Will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, repent. You know, sometimes we think repentance is about Oh, I have a lust problem. I, I need to repent. But sometimes it's just about an attitude or a thought. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, God, that I 
The enemy gave me that thought, but I stayed on that thought for too long. I came into agreement with it. So I ask you to forgive me. I come out of agreement with it. I repent. (laughs) Will seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. So humility releases God to, for us to hear, for us to be forgiven and us to be, see healing. Humility releases hearing, forgiving and healing. Some people say, I can't hear God. Well, maybe you're carrying something that you need to repent of and humble yourself with. Hmm. You, go, you can know the Scripture but miss the God of the Scripture. You know, the Pharisees knew all about the Messiah coming, but when He turned up, they missed Him. Why? Because they had pride. (laughs) God will hear, He will forgive, and He will heal. I don't know about you, but I want God to hear me. I I want God to forgive me, and I want God to release me for healing and to bring healing to others. Matthew 23, verse 12, and here's the challenge when this happens. It says, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, but those who humble themselves will be exalted. So the result is God will exalt. But the children of Israel, here's the challenge. The children of Israel were blessed. In in the Old Testament, when they were blessed, they become self-dependent instead of God-dependent. You know the challenge with a church like yours and mine is we get so blessed and God begins to move so greatly that we can say, look what we are doing. Look at our systems. Look at our, even oh, we, we've got this system of prayer. No, the prayer system is for you to pray, not just to be a system. <laughs> I remember one time I was at a prayer meeting and, it, and uh, we're walking up and down and praying and, and God spoke to me and He says, I'm not here. I go, what do you mean you're not here? You're everywhere. He goes, yeah, but I'm not here. What are you doing? You're, you're, you're doing a form of godliness, but denying the power of. You're in a process, not a relationship. He said, you're, 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 it's almost you're like the prophets of Baal, cutting themselves to get the attention of God because you're, going, you're putting your trust in the method of prayer, not the Messiah of prayer. Because sometimes we can put ourself, our, our trust in the structures, not the Saviour. And that moment, because I couldn't feel God, I said, oh, I'm so sorry, God, I repented. And at that moment, His presence just came. The more you're blessed, Mr. Businessman, the more you should give. And Mrs. Businesswoman. The more God blesses you, and don't say, I'll bless what I can afford. I hear people say, when when I get blessed, I'm going to be such a blessing to the church. I've got a guy in my church, he's a Malaysian, great young man, came at 18 years of age. Actually, Pastor um, Matt Fielder married him and his wife. And uh, he comes from a very good family here in Malaysia, very good family. She's from a very good family, great people. And uh, he decided that his whole life he was going to give before God blessed because he's going to put his dependence upon God. Very first year of his job, he gave the whole year's wage to the house of God. His wife's wage he lived on. And then he started a, a development company. And right now he's building a 2.7 billion, billion Australian dollars. So what's that? 10 billion ringgit development. Why? Because he constantly puts the house of God and the things of God first. He doesn't wait till he's blessed. He sows to be blessed. (laughs) Hmm. See, sometimes we can, well, when I've got that, you know, I can afford to give that. That, That's not humility. That's budgeting. (laughs) Humility is, God, what do you want me to do? 
What do you want me to give? What time? Well, you know, I'm, I'm too busy to serve now. I, my business is taking off. Well, maybe your business took off because you were serving. Whoa. <laughs> because here, watch this. The Son of Man didn't come to be served. He came to serve. But this is cool, this next one. <laughs> you are nice. Thank you for listening to this bald Australian. It's put on some kilos because of COVID. Blame it on the COVID. Um, any people put on kilos because of COVID? <laughs> I see your wife putting her husband's hand up. Uh, join the gym. <laughs> Proverbs 15 talks about that God will grant riches, honour and life. God will grant riches, honour and life. Why wouldn't you want to live on humbly? <laughs> Pride, I gotta get it myself, I gotta do it myself, I gotta take hold of it myself, I gotta do mine myself. No, no, God says, no, no, no. Let let me do it for you because you fight from, uh, from victory, not for victory. The battle is the Lord's, but the battle for us is our submission to the Lord. He's already won the battle, but the battle is getting our heart and our mind to submit to His will. Because we think sometimes we know better than Him. <laughs> I remember, and I hate it, this is what I hated about this word for me this year. Because God said, it's a year of humility. I said, it's always a year of humility. He goes, I know, but I want to highlight this this year. <laughs> and he started bringing people that I had some relationship challenges with over the years. Not, not that it was an issue now, but it didn't end off that well. And I remember one person, he says, someone said, oh, you know, you need to come and talk to them. And I'm, I'm not going to talk to them. And they, they hurt me and they hurt people and they hurt da, 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 da. and I could give all the excuses of why I wouldn't. <laughs> and God says, what's th this year of? <laughs> I said, well, favour. That's what it's for, favour. Um, <laughs> double portion. He says, humility. I'm like, but they should be saying sorry to me. But I went and saw them and I said, first thing I said, I don't know, I never deliberately did this, but if I hurt you, would you forgive me? It was like a balloon being popped in a room. Wow. And every part of the conversation from then was great. See, I, I, I don't wanna miss what God will do with riches and honour and life and exalt and bless and gain inheritance and land and territory be lifted up into I, I don't want to miss that but I don't want that to be my motive because true humility isn't giving to get true humility is giving just because he said <laughs> true humility is saying God it's not my will but it's your will true humility can hug a Judas and can wash his feet even knowing what he's done and what he's about to do. Jesus can still serve somebody who is sending him to the cross. But guess what? Every time we sin and have sinned, it sent him to the cross. So he served us. Sometimes we look at we look at our you know, Judas would go, wow, oh, Judas, I wouldn't do it. Jesus is amazing. Well, we've done Judas's to him. Every time we've disobeyed him, every time we become our own way, the result of him going to the cross wasn't Judas's betrayal. It was actually our sin. <laughs> My dad is 87. He's, a, he's an awesome guy. Out of my dad's life, a, a revival basically began in Australia in the Assemblies of God, which Mark and I are, part, are from. 
fact, now Mark serves on the executive called the ACC. And he was given the leadership when there was 80 churches and they, they grew it to 1,200 churches. And they were planting a church every second week. And my dad, probably out of his church, it's 25,000 church plants, ministries around the world. His impact is amazing. He's 87, I've just put him in a, a nursing home because he fall over, fall over this, a little bit. And uh, he wrote a book called Jesus First. And I said, he always says, keep humble, Russell. The more God blesses you, keep humble. Keep humble. The more he pours out blessing on you, keep humble. And one day he's walking through the car park of the church that I was raised in, called Influences Now by his Paradise Community Church. And there's a big, big tower that says Jesus saves and Jesus lives. It was actually in the old church and they moved it when they moved into the bigger building. And he's walking around and they've paid off the building. It's, it's just, they paid it off in a year. It was a miracle. 4,000 seat auditorium back then. And he's walking through the car park and he says, Jesus, why have you been so good? And Jesus lifted his head and he says, because you made it about me. At 86, he says, Russell, I'm not far from graduating to heaven. There's a couple of people, well, I'm good, but I just want to get everything. I don't want to carry anything to heaven from this earth. And he rang these people that he, he, he had not talked to for a long while. And he says, you know, the last thing we did, maybe there was a, it didn't end up good, but I just want to humble myself and apologise if I hurt you at all. And they're like, well, we can't even remember that. But such was his heart to carry the blessing of God, not just in this life, but into the next life. Yeah. <laughs> See, the, the motive of humility is the dependence on God in all areas. Our life, it's dependent upon Him. That's why Moses said, unless your presence goes with us. Yeah. I actually don't care how big our church gets or how big our ministry gets. I care is how much His presence is there. Because if His presence is there, everything will be looked after. If I'm dependent upon Him in everything, everything will be looked after. If I do what He tells me to do, everything will be looked after. So my challenge to us today, sorry I've gone long. <laughs> but my challenge to us, Kingdom City, because we are family, when Mark comes and preaches for Planet Shakers, he's, to us, Planet Shakers, he is family. The challenge to us is, not the blessing of God is what we do with it. The challenge to us is, do we get slowly prideful because God blesses us or the more He blesses us, the more we get dependent upon Him? The challenge to you today is, the more your business gets blessed, what are you going to do with your business? The more your family gets blessed, whatever is going to happen in your life because God promises to bless you. What dependence are you going to have on Him? <laughs> because my Bible says that God came and humbled Himself to the point of death. In other words, He gave up His rights for His dad's. If we're going to really change the world, we've got so many selfish Christians that it's all about them. And we wonder why revival doesn't break out all over the world. But a people who will say, God, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. Not my money's my God. Not my family's my God. Not my relationship's my God. You're my God. 